I'm deeply honored and delighted to have been given the, uh, the Global Environment Award by the IAIA. Um, it, uh, it's a great honor because um, I am not a, an environmentalist. My uh, focus of concern has been uh, human rights. Um, as um, uh, some of you know, and the uh, uh, selection committee pointed out, that um, I was selected for this award uh, because I uh, produced the uh, UN Guiding Principles um, on Business uh, and Human Rights over the course of a six-year mandate that involved um, nearly 50 international consultations um, all around the world. And my apologies for not being there with you. Um, I have to teach. My day job sometimes gets in the way of things I, I'd really like to do. Um, and this um, is one of them. But in any case, um, where our work really intersects, um, I believe, uh, is around the concept of sustainability. Um, environmental sustainability is very is 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 is, is widely understood these days. Uh, I think less well understood is the notion um, that um, the social dimension of sustainability um, is every bit as important. Um, and human rights um, are at the essence of social sustainability in the area of business. How a business uh, relates to uh, individuals and communities on which it has an impact um, is, is a major determinant of the social sustainability of that enterprise, and in a macro sense, um, the social sustainability um, of markets uh, themselves. So um, even though we do different kinds of work, I think um, there is that area of overlap, uh, and gradually environmental sustainability concerns and social sustainability concerns um, are coming closer and closer together. And in fact, in some of the impact assessments that I'm familiar with, uh, they're, they're part and parcel um, of the same process. Now, just a word about the, the guiding principles uh, themselves. They, they're 31 principles with commentary uh, explaining uh, what they mean and what they imply uh, for law and policy and practice, both for governments uh, and also for, for businesses. Um, with respect to business, um, the guiding principles uh, stipulate uh, a corporate responsibility to respect human rights, uh, which means to act with due diligence uh, to avoid infringing uh, on the human rights uh, of others, um, uh, on, on, on whom uh, the uh, corporate entity has an impact, and to address such adverse impacts uh, with which it is um, involved. Now, the notion of human rights due diligence itself has a number of components. Uh, the whole thing rests on um, a, a corporate policy endorsed at the highest level, uh, a policy to respect human rights, uh, which then gets translated into um, operational uh, guidance for various business units uh, and functions. So it rests um, on that. Uh, the second element of human rights due diligence is impact assessments, um, looking at the actual and potential impacts that a, a major project um, uh, can have um, on, on, on the surrounding communities or a, a larger reg region, or in, in, in the case of um, internet technology, for example, the end users, which uh, you know, can include people um, uh, all across the world. So impact assessments um, is number one. Um, number two, to, to obviously to incorporate the findings of those assessments um, into decision making about the particular uh, project um, or, or initiative um, that is being uh, planned. Um, thirdly, to track uh, performance uh, to make sure that um, it is aligned with uh, the lessons that have been drawn from the impact uh, assessment. Uh, and then finally, to communicate um, to the external world. Um, what the uh, uh, company um, um, uh, is doing with regard to uh, the risks that the whole um, effort um, has identified. So uh, the human rights due diligence component probably in principle isn't very different from the sorts of work uh, that you do uh, in the environmental field. And one of the things that I always stressed 
um, as um, special representative of the Secretary General for Business and Human Rights when I went around to do site visits, uh, to talking to companies, was uh, to, to encourage them um, not to segregate the human rights component of this and give it to somebody that then no one else pays attention to, but rather to incorporate it into the core practices that the company already has uh, with regard to uh, assessing um, impact uh, and acting um, on the findings. And so that's the long and the short um, of the corporate responsibility to respect, uh, which is one element of what is, is called the protect, respect, remedy framework. One other element which goes beyond impact assessment uh, has to do with remedy, uh, access to remedy by those who are adversely affected. Uh, and here one can uh, think of uh, various judicial remedy, uh, but also non-judicial remedy. And one of the uh, major contributions, um, uh, I've been told that the guiding principles have made uh, both to communities and to, and to companies, uh, is to lay out sort of the, the parameters, if you will, uh, of site-level non-judicial grievance mechanisms, which can serve as early warning systems, but also as um, ways to deal with uh, differences, if not conflicts, between communities and companies at a very early stage before they escalate uh, into major campaigns uh, or lawsuits. So that's what the um, um, UN guiding principles on business and human rights um, uh, in essence um, are about. Their uptake um, has been uh, widespread um, and, 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 fa and, and fairly quick. Um, uh, given the complexity of the issues uh, that are involved. Um, although, you know, I, I, I closed my final remarks to the Human Rights Council when I presented the guiding principles uh, in the spring of 2011, I said I'm, I'm under no illusion that um, the Council's endorsement uh, of these principles uh, will bring all business and human rights uh, challenges to an end, but it will mark the end of the beginning because it will finally give us a common platform uh, on which to build in the future uh, and uh, achieve uh, 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 ongoing pro progress um, and, and, and learning uh, in order to do better, uh, sort of a continuous improvement um, idea uh, that is embedded in the guiding principles. So thank you again for, for, for this award. Um, I'm deeply appreciative. Um, and as I say, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm unable to be there with you. Uh, I'm sorry to miss it. Thanks.